global modeling. Um, system dynamics, first of all, has actually played a pioneering role in global change modeling. World dynamics of Jake Forrester uh, was a seminal work and the limits to growth, which is based on world dynamics, has been a highly influential study when it was published in 1973. So it was one of the first studies who, uh, who focused on the feedbacks between the socioeconomic and environmental systems and who projected future uh, problems, future difficulties about sustainability. Simple models like our En-ROADS, for example, is accessible and usable by non-experts. They, through stakeholder participation, through engaging different groups of people, different stakeholders, they allow creating plausible and feasible scenarios because we take different uh, perspectives and especially expert or stakeholder perspectives into account and that allows developing plausible and feasible scenarios. Because of the scope, speed and accessibility, it allows covering a wide range of uncertainties if we would like to run that kind of uh, analysis. Also, the scope and the modeling approach we have behind it, system dynamics, allows integrating many more feedbacks and non-linearities non that we have in real life in the, between the human and Earth system. Scenarios generated by IAMs published in the IPCC report, they lack, uh, they, they are not able to capture this decline in the uh, solar photovoltaic cost. Therefore, the share they allocate to renewable energy in the uh, future scenarios is very limited. There is quite a uh, wide uncertainty there. Uh, with NROAD, we were able to, uh, especially with Lori's work, with very quick work, we were able to update the model uh, in a few months after doing all the analysis. And we were able to bring the cost values in the model to what is actually observed. That means that with the, with the capacity we have using a system dynamics model, using, using a different approach, we are able to uh, follow empirical data uh, even better than large integrated assessment models. Um, this is the interface of the ISDG. And uh, the model includes all 17 SDGs, uses about 78 targets. Uh, and this varies depending on the country application. I should point out that the ISDG is customized uh, for each country of application. Uh, each SDG icon you see here is a button that takes the user to a suite of policies. And these policies, again, will vary from country to country. The simulation just takes a couple of seconds and then returns the user to the user interface. And now you see two sets of bars next to each icon. The blue one is um, the SDG attainment at year 2030, which is the last year of the SDG time horizon under business as usual conditions. The red bar shows performance under the policy. And here you see the interventions, uh, the impact of the interventions on one of the targets for SDG 7, that's the proportion of electricity from renewable sources. It looks like a large jump, but in fact, the scale on the Y axis adjusts, so it's not as dramatic as one would think at first glance. And the simple diagram here shows that uh, shows the user some of the important linkages from the interventions to other variables. Here's a graph showing the influence of combined policies on the CO2 equivalent emissions. Uh, by the way, with this model, uh, similar to the En-ROADS model, there are no silver bullets. So we always examine um, uh, combinations of policies uh, to try to uh, arrive at a good SDG performance in the simulations. But of course, there is little value in the model without a modeling process that engages users. And this diagram shows, us, shows a few of the stages in that process. Uh, initially, a modeling team is formed. And throughout this spiral that you see, the team undergoes training and systems thinking and system dynamics, uh, as well as the ISDG and the user interface of the ISDG. Well, I and wanted to find some on. words written by partners, particularly the Malawi government, about how they perceive the model helped in the national planning process. And this is something taken from the, the, the strategy itself, and they identified five key areas 
uh, for the plan, for the national plan, and that was facilitated by using the ISDG. Also, the ISDG helped to align the KPAs, that's the key performance areas, to SDGs, and help prioritize SDGs for Malawi. So, you know, that was, that was positive. And uh, also, they mentioned that the ISDG simulations confirmed the implementation of the KPAs. PAs would impact the SDGs. So they are both very engaging, highly interactive, even in an online format. They require participants to deliberate in groups and make speeches and negotiate with other teams. Uh, the facilitation materials are free and available for anyone to use. And in both simulations, participants take on the role of policymakers and leaders who are charged with negotiating a global agreement to address climate change. So briefly, the first simulation is the world climate simulation. And this focuses really on the scale and urgency of action that leaders of national governments must take in order to reach our international climate goals. So you may be representing or playing in your role the president of the US or of China, and participants make public speeches where they pledge to reduce emissions and deforestation and also contribute financially to the Green Climate Fund. To able um, so just to kind of, you know, give you, I think most of us in the SD world sit in a place where we're focused on information. And we spend a lot of time and energy trying to communicate about climate change to close these gaps. And we've certainly tried to do that by what we call the information deficit model, which basically says if we provide people with, you know, solid, rigorous, accessible information, they will learn and they will take action and really um, based on what they learn. need um, to address climate change is collective knowledge and collective action.